you're watching CCS, Clarksville Community Network. Produced by Goodwin Productions. Powered by CDE Lightband. My name is Terry Jordan. I'm the exhibits curator here at the Customs House Museum in Clarksville, Tennessee, as well as a painter of figurative works and landscapes in oil. I was raised in upstate New York and I went to uh, school at FIT in Manhattan. I've always been interested in art back from the early days of five years old when I was painting pictures on the walls of my house, which didn't go over really well. Um, so I did much better once I moved on to school. We moved to Clarksville because my husband's parents were older and it was kind of our chance to come back and help out a little bit. It was an easy transition for us. We've been in Clarksville now for over 20 years, as originally where my husband is from, so in a lot of ways it's very similar to where I grew up. I fell in love with the museum when we moved here and opportunity came along that I was able to come work. We're a general museum, which means we get to do a little bit of everything, which is exciting from an exhibit standpoint. We can do the art and the things that I really love, and we do a little bit of the history, and a little bit of the culture and the local stories from the community. I usually work my exhibit calendar about three years out. And I'm really pleased that as I've progressed and gone along here in this position, and I've been able to even expand my contacts and the connections. We are actually getting some real serious internationally known artists that are coming here and showing with us. We do approximately 30 changing exhibits a year and then we have a few galleries that are permanent. Terry Jordan is such an amazing talent as a painter, but also as a curator of exhibits here at the museum. I've known Terry for over 20 years and have enjoyed that relationship to see her grow both artistically and professionally. As the curator of exhibits at the museum, it's her responsibility to assemble the work of various artists and other subject matter into presentations that we make to the public. She's a master at analyzing and selecting beautiful pieces for inclusion in exhibits. Anyone who's visited the Customs House Museum and attended exhibits that she's curated clearly understands she has a unique ability to select art and put these marvelous shows together. She's great to work for. She's very creative, very intuitive. I call her the feng shui of art hanging. She knows how to hang the art to look, to look its very best. She plans ahead. I mean, she's already got the galleries filled up. We are building our collection, which helps us do bigger exhibitions within the collection. Um, so we've got some great things coming up, some big shows. I'm partnering with some other museums um, to bring some things to Clarksville that people wouldn't otherwise get to see. So it's very exciting to build these kind of relationships. We're getting a lot more traffic into the museum from outside of Clarksville, and everyone just really loves our museum and our town. We are thrilled to, to continue doing 30 or so changing exhibits a year. It seems like a lot, but people should always keep coming back. With my personal work, I've had the fortunate uh, opportunities to exhibit all across the United States in juried shows. Most recently in Cooperstown, New York, I was in another juried show and won some awards for my, my artwork there. It seems to be a really good market for me. 
Most of my work is figurative. I do do some landscapes. A lot of them are narrative pieces and they're influenced kind of from places I've been, things I've seen, or experiences going on in my life. Several of the pieces have symbolisms throughout them. They're personal to me, but I don't like to tell the public too much about what's in them. I like everybody to take their own stories from the work that I do. Uh, it's kind of interesting, a lot of people will say they see me in the works, and I guess probably all my paintings are a little bit of a self-portrait in some way. But I keep a little bit to myself too. I think by having the women looking at you most of the time is just, just a more um, positive and forceful view and, and, you know, and sometimes it makes people uncomfortable. I have had people that, that have said, well, you know, I don't, I, you know, she's, she's just looking at me and judging me too much and um, <laughs> it's not my intent to judge, but I like that they elicit a reaction like that. I think it just speaks to being present in the moment, that they're right there with you. My process of painting, um, I never work on white canvas. For some reason, the white and I don't get along. Uh, I usually prime my canvas with either cerulean blue or black. Most of my works are on black and sometimes you can see a little bit of that come through almost as outlines through the finished pieces. I have a small studio in my house. It kind of shifts and changes depending on what's going on, um, how much space I have to work. I work on a couple of different easels at a time and also sometimes in a smaller piece I'm sitting at, at a more of a tabletop. Usually I'm working on about five paintings at one time just with the oils and the drying time and the layering processes. That's kind of how I go. Every night or morning I try to do something whether it's just priming canvas but it's very important for me to just get in that studio every day if possible. If I go too long without being in it, then I get kind of cranky. So it's good for everybody if I'm painting. Terry has developed her own hallmark style that is unmistakable. She really is a master at using geometry in the composition of her paintings. She really understands color and value. She can make even the most simple subject matter really come alive with her use of limited colors. I think that's a particular skill that not many artists really perfect. A lot of the pieces kind of just start with sketching on the canvas after they've been primed. I do occasionally photograph families and friends and put them in little scenarios and clothing situations and those will come out in my works too. And then there are times where I'll just go in and I'm priming or I might start sketching and it just becomes something. Usually I'm listening to music when I paint, but the music seems to also kind of set the tone with what I'm working on. I always paint in series or suites, as I call them, and they're usually under a theme. And several of the paintings 
um, that you're going to be seeing are from a series called Resolutions. And I think it's just part of growing older and you start analyzing things, people start dying. So it's a lot of dealing with death, but in a, in a more, I think, beautiful way and not just doom and gloom. And that's where a lot of the symbolism comes into play too. Things like the butterflies, the calla lilies, the ferns and the trees, and there's a lot of symbolism, which you know, goes back beyond the Victorian age. There was always symbolism used in paintings that kind of helped tell the story. And that's one of the things I've been, always been interested in is just how as cultures change and morph, a lot of superstitions and symbolism seem to carry through with all different cultures over time. And it's, it's, it's fascinating to me that something can mean the same in Rome as it did in India 100 years later. It's, it's uh, I think, a fascinating part of the human culture. So this painting is called The Release, and it goes back to the symbolisms of butterflies, kind of symbolic of people who have passed. And this was painted at a time when there was just like one death of, a, of someone we knew closely after another. And so it's just kind of releasing them into the sky. The blue color also is symbolic of spirituals and royalty. Picasso used a lot of blues in his blue period that was more reflective of the soulful and the spiritual. So it's kind of a play on that. There's the one where she's shrouded in the white with the sparrow on her shoulder. And that is a piece called The 25th Hour. I have a friend who's Jewish, and in the Jewish religion, when you pass, you are wrapped in a white shroud to protect you. And so this was done right after a friend of mine passed away. There is a yellow bird in the foreground, and that is actually a piece of art that she gave me right before she passed away. So that's kind of memorial to my friend Jeanette. And sometimes I do use my sister or my friends and I have them pose in photos. But I think all of the other ones are more just representational. They could be anybody. When I'm painting my figures too, I try to keep them almost ageless in the sense of their dress so that it could be any woman at any time. You can't necessarily pinpoint it and say, that is someone from 1850 because of the way she's dressed or that is someone from 2017 because of the way she's dressed. That's not the important part to me of telling my story in the painting, so I try to keep them more neutral, and I think that also helps someone connect to the painting better too because it's more relatable. I used to do work in pastels a little bit until I became pregnant and then it's just not good having the pigments around your hands and the breathing. Um, so I kind of stopped doing the pastels and I'm pretty much just working oils now. Occasionally I'll do something in acrylic, but more or less if that's a commission piece or it's a timing piece, but the oils are really the medium that I prefer. I just like that meaty texture that you get. She understands color dynamics and composition. It's both figurative and flowing, but it can also be very graphic and geometric depending on her subject matter. I usually have a little bit more freedom and my figurative work is realism, but it's not photographic realism. 
You have to know my work and know that it's, even when I'm doing commission portrait of people, it's not gonna look like a photograph. That's just not my style and how I work. My favorite artist of all time would have to be Matisse. And I think a lot of my work is reflective of that with the outlines and the colorations. Frida Kahlo, I think with a lot of the symbolism, you can see bits of that in my work. Any of the Impressionists, I think, were great. Anybody who lived a little bit on the edge. I just like a lot of the people who not necessarily do political work, or, but they're kind of on the edge at their time, and they're a little gutsy and innovative, and I think they make a great statement. And I think you can look at a, a painting and appreciate it, and it, does, it can just be a beautiful piece of work and have a great little story about its past. It doesn't necessarily have to have some kind of deep meaning to it to make it a worthy piece of artwork. painting was kind of in the works when a friend of ours who had adopted this pet cat from the neighborhood and it just kind of became their cat. The cat became a child and it ate well and then just suddenly disappeared and so that's kind of why the cat came into the painting. It's just kind of that embracing of the summer and everything is wonderful and then there's this cat that's just part of the family. The new piece that I've done, kind of experimenting with the colors, kind of experimenting with the landscape, which is almost abstracted. If you look closely, you can kind of see shadows of like a back skyline of trees and some trees coming up out of it, but it's done very abstractly. And it's on a larger canvas, which is 30 by 40, and I'm starting to go much bigger but normally I was working in about a 16 by 20 range before that. I had gone to a lecture uh, of a New York artist who really works abstractly, although he calls some of them landscapes. And I noticed in bits of his very modern, bold colors that there were these little subtle hints of um, like the Hudson River Valley artist backgrounds. You could kind of get that misty, mountainous lines in the back. And so this was kind of my interpretation of pulling in a little bit of the past with that kind of misty landscape background, but a very contemporary Southern woman who looks very tough. She's kind of looking at you like she's trying to figure you out. So this is a, a new piece for me, kind of pulling in the abstracts with a figurative. Years ago, I did a series called The Storyville Girls, and I used a lot of wallpaper backgrounds with the figurative works. And I'm thinking about a little bit lately and going back to those wonderful wallpapers of William Morris and the Victorian era. And this is kind of a new play with a contemporary woman as opposed to the 1800 Storyville Girls. She's just kind of looking at you, kind of figuring it out. A lot of my figurative pieces, they're very strong women and they're look, usually looking straight on at you. I have a collector that um, was purchasing a painting and then when she came to pick it up, she saw another one that she liked and I said, oh, well, just take them both home, live with them for a while and see what you think. And about six weeks later, she called and she's like, I'm washing my dishes. And she renames them. She renames every one that she's ever bought from me. She had renamed one Scarlet and then she would call me at work and say, I don't know, I feel like Scarlet's judging me. She's staring at me like my mother would. But she kept her. <laughs> Take up and didn't return her, but you, you just never know. So I, I think uh, I think 
the face on makes more of a connection, for good or for bad. A lot of the pieces kind of just start with sketching on the canvas after they've been primed. And sometimes I work from photo references. I always have my camera and I'll take pictures. And so those come into play often, particularly with the landscapes, but sometimes with the other pieces too, the more interior scenes and the people. And then the next paintings are taken from reference photos from being on the road. Those landscapes are scenes uh, down in the Franklin, Tennessee area. A lot of times when we are driving and even with work, we always take our cameras. I've gotten quite good at just clicking pictures as we're driving along. Those are references, so that's more of my local feels, which a lot of my landscapes are. They're usually places that I spend a lot of time. My son Garrick, who is 12, going on 20, is probably my biggest critic. He also has no problem telling me uh, maybe you should do this, or maybe you need to put a turtle in that. He's got his own opinions, but he has kind of a good eye, and he always has them. Um, we've taken him to museums from the time he was a baby, and he picks out some good pieces in a museum show that are his favorites, so I think, I think we've got hope. <laughs> Here, <laughs> Garrick will tell me point blank what he likes and what he doesn't like. In fact, we went to the opening reception at the Cooperstown show, and I have two works in the show. It was 100 pieces out of about 500 that were chosen. He looked at the one painting, he said, well, where's the other one? And I said, oh, it's right there on the line. He said, nah, that one's not as good. So he kind of tells it to me like it is. When you're working a job and raising a small child, you just kind of have to make adjustments. We do that for every part of our life, so it's just really important that if it's painting at 10 o'clock at night, even if it's just for 20 minutes of priming canvas or if I'm painting at 5 in the morning, but even just for a few minutes a day, I try to get in there and do something. What I'm working on now um, in my new series, I'm working bigger. I'm starting to do a lot more on larger canvases. The newer pieces that, that I'm working on in the studio have a little bit of more of a surreal edge to them, a little bit of interesting factor, like maybe objects that you wouldn't normally expect to find together. And I kind of think that's a movement going on nationally. I think that you're gonna see a lot more of emerging artists and young artists working in a surreal, more surreal figurative work where it's not going to be just portraits it's actually more stories and narrations which is kind of what I've been doing for a while. Her talent as an artist is greatly enhanced by her ability to see the beauty of work of other artists, and I think she draws inspiration from that. My wife Patty and I are big fans of Terry Jordan, and we have several paintings in our collection that we enjoy very much. I love her work. She's, she does a good job. I've got pop-up shows coming, um, working on a new website, so we're just you know, moving things along and, and getting to a point of progression where hopefully we'll be out there in some more galleries on a regular basis. Terry clearly has a passion for her art, and we're all beneficiaries of her talent.
For current and exclusive content, subscribe to CDE Lightband, connecting you at the speed of light.